We're gonna get all this stuff on this table. All this stuff is gonna slowly disappear. We're gonna get it installed in the white car. Now in our last video, we removed the harnesses and prepped Turbo Fox body for a brand new Holley Terminator X install. This is the Gen 2 kit that's been modified by Anderson Ford Motorsports and MF Customs. Now it's time to get busy, start from square one, and get this harness installed and the car fired before the end of the video. Taking the seat out next. These are the Team Z aluminum brackets. We made studs for both all the way around. We're gonna see if the Terminator X actually fits in the middle of it. So what we're trying to figure out is if the Terminator X is going to fit right here. This is how you would mount it factory underneath of your seat. One of the things we were kind of worried about running the Team Z bracket, have our seat set where we want it. But this is going to obviously hit the aluminum bracket here because it won't be wide enough. See what I mean? What well, Cousin Paul and I have decided to do, we're just going to go ahead and you can see how perfectly these line up. So this is aluminum. I'm not worried about it. We're just going to go ahead and uh, mount this Holly ECU mm -hmm. far enough back to where we can still get a belt through it if we need to. We'll worry about that. Though. All right, so we got this mounted. Um, pretty nice little spot. Hopefully we don't have any harness length problems. We might have to, the nice thing is, is I can bring it all the way back up if I do. So that's, I guess that's the next thing we need to do is just kind of set it in there and see if the harnesses are actually gonna work. So I guess we really don't need this stuff anymore. We'll just go ahead and I did have another Terminator kit. I think this is a three bar map sensor. And there was something else in here. We got the wide band, okay, so we, we'll need this. Yeah, the, the, this is for my laptop, I think, so I need to grab that. I'm gonna probably end up sending this one back out to Anderson and having the MF Customs hook it back up too, so. Okay, let's unravel this mess. We'll see what kind of uh, wire extensions we have. This is the actual main harness here. Here's that rubber grommet that we were fighting earlier. Fuel pump relay, fuel fuse, I betcha. Some outputs and inputs. Chassis ground, this will go to key on. I think this is the green wires for the fuel, so. Let's go ahead and kick this in the uh, engine bay and see where we're at. Bring it on through, bro. So to install the main harness, we're gonna go right back into the same factory harness hole that we pulled the old one out of. probably end up doing is just routing around this one here. I remember somebody mentioning take this off it makes it easier to go through the uh, little hole here. There we go. This is probably going to be plenty of wire because I would imagine the injector harness goes right here. So one thing I had to be careful of is since I moved the ECU back a little bit further than normal are my harnesses all going to reach? Gonna have to deal with. Engine coolant temp sensor. This is oil pressure iac so moving right along just kind of identifying here's my tfi harness that was actually rewired and done with uh, mf customs part of the gen 2 kit this is injector harness so that's just checking the plugs they were good there the other ford connectors iac tps intake the iat intake air temp sense and i gotta actually make one here wbo2 this is the wide band adapter and we just got a brand new wide band out of our other kit It'll plug into here, and then I'll plug it in under the downpipe or downer. So, yep. Nice little area. Go ahead and start connecting stuff up. Having no heater box definitely does help, but it's more of a street strip race car. I'll use a clamp and, and kind of mount it on the wall. Got it all plugged in for the most part. Back to this later and start wiring some stuff up. Won't take too long. Ran the power out the back here, underneath the carpet through the quarter panel. I have a battery box and a battery relocation, so pretty easy. Just put a hole in here. I'm gonna wrap and convolute through that hole and just hook up power and ground directly to my fleet terminals that I had set up. Well, not a really a bad install. It doesn't really take too awful long. Not having to deal with the rewiring the TPS and the IAC. I don't have to 
mess with that. I know it's already set and ready to go. Just got to hook up. I know this is a key on for my electric fan setup, which I've already got like an after aftermarket electric fan. And being this is a Terminator X, I won't have to use one of my input outputs for- On the Holley Terminator X, you only get four input outputs. An electric fan is one of them. I've been running a Ron Francis fan controller on a contour fan for years. So we're just going to continue to use that and save an input output. Okay, we're going to go ahead and stick our battery back together and make our connections for the Terminator X and come through the hole here. Got a little grommet kit, put a little grommet on the wires, put a couple connectors on, hook the battery back up, ran like this behind the quarter panel. Also wanted to make special mention that this is my fuel pump relay. So we're just gonna have the trigger for the ECU. Since the relay is already set up, we can just gonna go ahead and bypass the one under the seat. Okay, so we got power and ground hooked up. Got everything we need back here at the battery, which wouldn't be much different than if you had the battery here in the stock location. We're gonna mount the seat. Terminator X is already mounted to the seat bracket. We're gonna get under the dash and start bust out some of our wire clamps, get it tucked away and work our way into the engine bay. Got a couple connections to make. Got a couple things we wanna show here on the channel. Stick around. Now, before I get into all this mess under here, I wanna make sure that my harness is long enough. We'll come back in here and plug, do the key on, do the engine ground and the fuel pump relay. Probably gonna take the harness and do the wire loom clamps that we had just showed. This is a low dollar map sensor. Via the harness upgrades that MF Customs does with the Gen 2 kit, one of the things that they actually change for us is they actually make the cannon plug for this switch plugs right into the low dollar. So we're just gonna put the low dollar right here and put the sensor, plug it in when it's ready. Now the standard Terminator X kit comes with this plug. And if you're going boosted, supercharged or turbo, you're gonna, this is the three bar map. It's gonna have get two bar, three bar, four bar or whatever. So next, I think we're just gonna go ahead and install the injector harness. Now, each one of these are marked for cylinders. <clears throat> nice and tight. Factory ones get a little bit loose over time. These ones just go right into place. Little locks. Okay. So now that I got the injector harness in, I can actually connect injector main plug and it'll give me kind of a center point like the salt, salt and pepper shakers used to do. So I know about right here is where I can put my first clamp. I'm gonna utilize this firewall to keep it out of the way of the engine. That way, if I gotta pull the engine out, I don't have to mess with any of the harness for the most part. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna put the grommet in. Moving on, this is one of those connectors that MF Customs changed into a Ford connector, so I don't have to cut any of my wires or mess with any of my TPS that works. Since wideband is over here on the downpipe, I'm gonna leave this on this side. This is IAC. IAC, just like the TPS, will go underneath here. It plugs right in, no problem. Now I didn't have to mess with my IAC. This is my map sensor. And this is how I know I need to come out a little bit. We just did this map and we just talked about it. This is the low dollar connector. So we'll pull the harness over. Perfect, I like it. This is the ignition. So this is the TFI. Put a little dielectric grease on it. Since we still use a distributor, this is what we get. Boom, nice solid connection. Hear that thing clip? So we're gonna come down this side here, just like OE. We will connect it to the ignition cannon plug. Or here's the intake air temp sensor that we used to run. There's another connector that MF Customs puts on here. Cool, it temp sensor needs to come over on this side of the harness. Let me go ahead and put this, utilize some of the factory holes here. That way it keeps the uh, harness nice and stable and out of the way. Put another one right here. Pretty clean little installation with the grommet. Had to clearance it a little bit. It'd be nice to have the harness on the back side. May not look the cleanest, but this car is not a show car, it's a go car. Not super worried about it. 
So one of the last plugs we got to do is the CTS, which is the coolant temp sensor. This is actually the factory plug that's supposed to plug into the actual sensor down here. But as you can see, I made my own setup here on 8-2 deck with this fuel rail and this intake. What I'm going to actually do is just simply unpin the black plug and create a new plug, create a sub harness, plugs into this one over here. Then at that point, folks, we'll be back inside. We'll hook up a couple wires and the install's done. Yeah, it's pretty easy to do. Just unpin it. Put it in the new plug. This is actually a Ford connector right here. Put the factory lock in. Boom. All done. I'll zip tight over here, create a sub harness, and come over to my coolant temp sensor. Oil pressure as we'll do another low dollar and just run the sensor right here on our uh, on our feed. We have a fuel pressure gauge here in the wheel well like we did my black car and we'll just run a we'll run the fuel pressure gauge up to here with the sensor and i think we'll set it up that way for the most part i got most of the swap installed into the mustang lat yesterday got a couple things to tidy up today got to finish up the ignition coil set the negative which is easy we're just going to use the factory ground the 12 volt switch which we're going to go over to the fuse box and the 12 volt fuel pump now this is where i'm going to change this up a little bit if you've been following the channel and you have a wired fuel pump like i do and what i mean by wired in this video above I actually wired a relay into my aftermarket pump setup. So I technically don't need the factory wire or the factory fuel pump relay. So Holly can control the fuel pump right back to the relay I've already set up as a secondary. So we've already wrote a tune. We'll talk about the tune in another video, but Terminator X install, boosted E85, aftermarket stroker, I'm about to fire it up soon. So all I basically did was take the 12 volt switched fuel pump and just ran it back into the harness. I'm gonna zip tie it about right here. Make a connection and run it into this loom going back to the back where the relay's at. Okay, got our wide band set up and ran through the wide band too. We are finishing up the key on switch and getting the panel back in the car. We put the ground at the factory location and just zip tied up the excess. We also got the sensing wire for the fuel pump relay. We actually made an extension and went to the back like I had just mentioned. So after I finish up the fuse panel here in a second, everything in the car is done outside of cleaning up my mess. We got majority of the engine bay done. We're pretty much at the point to where we're finishing up the coil, the TFI adapter harness, bringing the laptop over and trying to get it started for the first time. If you noticed earlier in the video, I zip tied the, the oil and the fuel pressure over here. This is only temporary. At the time of the making of the video, I did not have the two sensors for oil and fuel. We did receive them in the mail today. It only takes us about 30 minutes to set it up. And I mentioned earlier in the video where we were going to put them. Okay, we got the CAN bus here. This is the splitter. I think you have to buy this separately, but it allows for the handheld and for laptop. And it hooks up right here in the main harness. And I'll be able to data log from the handheld and start it. And I'll get back to the pits. I'll be able to mess with it on a laptop if needed. But this is extra, and I'm pretty sure the splitter is extra. Uh, definitely something you want to consider getting for your kit. Don't try to run the handheld and the laptop at the same time and make corrections. It's one or the other. My car is an 87. So 87, 89, there's, there's a gray and a black plug here at your brake booster. Those used to go to the uh, engine harness that came out of the car. I'm giving you guys some good information here on the factory pinout for the Holly Terminator. Red and wire here is the positive side that will power the CD box or the ignition box that I have. But if you don't have an ignition box, it'll power your coil. And then this top one is the tan and yellow stripe. This is the negative side of the coil. If you have an 87, 89, what you see right here is the proper way of doing it. This is your coil on. Since I have a new wire here or a new connector, it's gonna be like this. It's gonna go in here like this. I'm gonna clean this up and make different connections. You see that? Green wire is gonna go to green wire is gonna go to the tan and yellow. Red wire comes from here. There's the locations. And the extra green wire is gonna get attached to the white wire that gets attached to the TFI ad adapter and goes to the TFI module. White to green, the extra wire. The other green to the negative side of the tack. The red wire is what powers the coil. Now this connector is going to get wired back into my box like it was from the factory. And the orange and black aren't gonna change. It's gonna stay into my coil here. And that's how everything works. Now they make an adapter harness that makes all this a lot easier. You have to make a couple connections, but we're getting rid of this coil anyways for a new one. And we're gonna put a new plug on this side too. So it's a nice clean connection for the TFI setup. I hope that kind of clears people up. I also wanted to mention the black plug on the 8789 on the back side of the plug 
that gets plugged back in if you want to run factory oil in where the old ECT would be. And you would have a similar type of sensor down here at the oil where you would plug that in. This is my first time installing the Terminator. I spent most of the time routing wires and, and hooking connections up. So I hope this information is helping you guys. We're gonna get this stuff hooked up real quick. Bring the laptop over, we're gonna sync it up. We're gonna see if this thing fires up in this video. Okay, I think we're at the point. We're about to try to fire it. Don't mind the hot mess. I got shit literally everywhere on this install. Last couple things we did, we switched over to the Screaming Demon, cleaned up this connector, made a sub harness that went to the gray plug, and we also made a weatherproof connection and wrapped it a little bit for the TFI. Well, folks, we finally made it to this point. We had built a tune on the laptop. We had some communication errors between the laptop and the USB drivers and the ECU. And we'll talk about that another time. We ended up getting the tune loaded onto the SD card on the handheld, did some firmware updates on both the laptop program and the handheld, loaded the file, did the TPS auto reset, and now we're ready to fire the car. Again, I want to make a special shout out to Donnie B at Anderson Ford Motorsports for helping me out with the install. A lot of valuable information. We're going to do another video with the tune and the static timing as this car is actually ready to fire right now. finally here at the end the car runs overall not a terrible install it was time consuming the gen 2 holly terminator x some of the connectors that they changed and, and modified in the in the harness definitely made a difference and helped us not to have to snip them and definitely worth the money in my opinion the four or five connectors it did have some things that needed to be gone through with my harness and you know creating a couple sub harnesses and the tune however we're going to be talking about that in another video it's not your typical build where it's just a stock motor or lightly modded motor being it's e85 big injectors turbo 363 stroker pretty modified for what it is so being the first install terminator x it wasn't going to be a successful weekend until i heard this thing fire back up you enjoy the builds and the tuning and everything in the dyno and racing everything we do leave me a comment below give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already check out that join button if we're gonna give something back to the channel but outside of that i appreciate you guys we'll see you soon in the next video